everyone. All right, so I'm Captain Krieger, uh, Officer Selection Officer for South Florida, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. I wanted to talk to you guys today a little bit about self-care at Officer Candidate School. So you guys saw a few pictures of my super blistered feet at the basic school, um, and I'm going to save that topic for a little bit later. Uh, but today I have my special guests with me, uh, Brandon and Danielle Platt. They are both athletic trainers at Troy University, Alabama, um, and so they're going to talk to us a little bit about how you can do self-care at Officer Canada School with the tools they give you in the squad bay to prevent your injuries. So uh, at Officer Canada School, I will never tell you guys not to go to medical. You should always go to medical and see the, the doctors if you feel like you're sick or injured. Um, but there are definitely some things you can do to prevent yourself from going and missing training. You don't necessarily get dropped at officer candidate school for some of the injuries, uh, like a medical drop. You will get dropped though for a low physical fitness GPA, meaning and as well as a failure to evaluate. So those failure to evaluate, um, that's if you miss the four mile, the six mile, the 9.3 mile hike because your IT band was hurting you um, and you couldn't complete it that's a reason why you could get dropped and you're not gonna get that LOD or line of, uh, line of duty injury um, re-enrollment waiver. So some of the common reasons why you might get dropped out of your candidate school. IT band syndrome's a big one. It's not just gonna be pain in your hips, but it could be pain in your knees and that's just gonna prevent you from running. You could get dropped for stress, fract stress fractures in the lower extremities to include your feet, shins, hips, femoral neck, um, and then there's going to be a lot of back pain, possible some shoulder mobility issues um, that might prevent you from doing your pull-ups um, as well as just general pain overall. Um, and then uh, some other injuries that you might incur. Um, we'll, we're going to go into all of those to include like rolling your ankle and how you can increase your uh, ankle stability. So the first one you guys want to talk about, um, you want to do IT band syndrome? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So IT band syndrome. Okay, so IT band syndrome, what that means is, is that your IT band, it actually starts your hip and goes all the way down to your knee, um, on the outside of your knee. So it's a pretty big muscle, right? So the best way to prevent IT band friction syndrome, which ultimately is inflammation of either the origin, so where it starts, or the insertion of where it ends, um, whether it be your hip or your knee, so inflammation of either of those two points is really stretching. So you stretch your IT band, you're going to be, uh, I would say, preventing or helping to prevent the um, incurment of IT band friction syndrome. So Brandon's going to um, show how you can stretch your IT band properly. Well, the one big uh, way I show to stretch the IT band is to, to use what I call the figure four stretch. And what that is, is you get in what I, what I call the figure four position. You bring your knee up. If, if my right IT band is tight, I bring my left knee up to about 90 degrees, and I push. <laughs> I'm really tight. <laughs> I bring my left knee into as much of a 90 degree position as I can, and I push down in this position. And what that does is it stretches my T-band from my hip all the way to my knee. What it also does is it stretches out my piriformis, which is right around um, my buttocks muscle. And um, what that allows is for the T-band to stretch. And I usually hold this for three to five sets of 30 seconds at a time. Um, the other thing we can do is, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> I'm very, very, very tight. <laughs> the other thing we can do is anything in this position, so if we're stretching the groin out, we can get in this hurdler stretch position, and instead of really stretching out this way, we can stretch down towards the floor, which will allow us to push down and stretch the IT band. The other thing we can do is we can take, um, which you, you all are given in the um, squat base, in the squat bay, squat base. And we can r really roll out the IT band wherever we feel the tightness. So whether it's up towards the top, and we can do this in the figure four position as well. So whether it's up towards the top of the IT band, or it's down towards the bottom of the IT band by the knee, 
Or we can also roll towards the side, whether it's up towards the top of the thigh or down towards the knee. And we can really kind of roll out the IT band, which can really loosen up any kind of adhesions that we have throughout the IT band when we're trying to stretch. Utilizing uh, a strap you guys might have access to. So if you take this strap, wrap it around your foot, okay? Pull it out and then also take your leg and pull it out to the side. That will stretch the IT band as well. So that can be a really good um, benefit to you guys. Um, utilizing some, um, so foam rolling can really take many different shapes. Um, so it can be using an actual foam roller, which unfortunately we don't have here, but um, you can use one of those, you can use the actual stick, or you can use a ball. Um, these kind of balls that you might have access to, um, those, they have little pricklies on the end of them, um, so they can give a little bit more um, sensitivity um, to the foam roll, or you can use kind of a harder ball, um, like a lacrosse ball or a baseball or something like that, to use as a foam roller. All of those work the same. Um, it's all going to be the same science behind it, so they're all going to um, break down the adhesions just the same. So what those will do is they'll help kind of eliminate the um, gunk that will sit in there from the inflammation and help kind of, um, I guess, relax the muscle is the best way to describe it. So that when you guys are out um, working in, in your barracks or um, on, the trails. on the trails, PT, whatever it might be, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to work. Make sure, though, that when you're working these muscles and when you're working the IT band specifically, that we are working from the hip all the way down to the knee. Um, oftentimes, everybody works just where there's a painful area. Remember that the IT band runs from the hip all the way down past the knee and attaches actually below the knee. So if we're attaching from the above the, above the hip all the way down to below the knee, that the IT band can be tight anywhere between there. So even though you're feeling an area that is tight or painful just in a specific spot, make sure we are working in the entire length of the IT band so we don't have any kind of issues throughout the length of the issue. And so I, know saying, we're, I know we're going to get – sorry to interrupt you, but I know we're going to get into shin splints a little later. Yeah. But some of the questions were, can we use some of these similar stretches or at least rolling uh, techniques on your shins or yes. shin splints area? Yes. Let's, let's go into shin splints. Okay. There right. you go. Shin splints so, is next. So here's the thing about shin splints, and I'm going to go a little bit of a soapbox here. Um, shin splints – so in order to have a true shin splint, it's actually um, stretch fractures within your uh, tibia, which is the – the front um, bone that you feel the most prominent within your shins. Sorry, I need to hold it back up. Um, <laughs> but anxious. doing that is actually pretty hard to do. A lot of the time when you're feeling soreness within your shins, it's actually tibialis anterior, which is a muscle that you have in the front part of your shins here. It's actually tightness from that. Now, that muscle connects directly to your tibia. So uh, if you have inflammation or tightness of that muscle, it's going to kind of Pull on your on your tibia a little bit which ultimately might cause that same pain that you will feel so the best way to do that is stretching and rolling out and everything that we just discussed it's going to take a little bit of different form though okay so with that um, the base the best stretch to do is tibialis anterior stretching okay um, you want to they kept here. They they do get a foam roller. Is that correct? Yes, in the squad bays you will get a foam roller. You'll get all of these tools. It'll be in the front of the squad bay. Um, you won't be able to have access it, to it until uh, the evening or your nighttime. Um, and so that's one of the, we're just telling you now. Like spend five ten minutes every day doing some of these stretches. Um, but yeah, let's take it. Okay, like Captain Greer said, you will get a foam roller in in your your package. So. Um, the one thing, and I'll use, I'll use the stick kind of as a, an example of a foam roller. Obviously, it's not nearly as thick. Um, but they, one of the best things to use for a tibialis anterior stretch that I've found is a foam roller. Um, so what you will do is you will get on your knee. And I'll, I will face away just so you can kind of see um, as an example. Um, and I'm about as inflexible as anybody, any human being comes. Um, so please forgive me. But... Um, if this is your foam roller, you're going to put your feet on the foam roller and you're going to sit back on your heels as far as you can. And obviously, I can sit back a, a, a good deal 
when there's not much under my feet. Okay? Imagine there's a foam roll under my feet. It's going to be about up to here. I'm going to be able to sit back. What that's going to do is it's going to stretch out the front of your shins, your tibialis anterior, right in through this area. And uh, with Captain Krieger, I was able to cheat a little bit this weekend um, and, and use a little bit of manual therapy on her, but um, she was able to really stretch out the anterior tib um, quite frequently this weekend, and, and that was able to really help her be able to sit back on her on her heels. So that would be kind of one of the more um, the, the, one of the easier ways I can I can really say to be able to stretch out the anterior tip. Um, some other ways that you can stretch that, obviously, again, like we were saying, with either the a cross ball on the anterior tip or either of the kind of spike balls um, on that area to be able to kind of rub out that area and a massage technique um, in addition to being, being able to stretch out that area. So um, some other ways you can help, I guess we'll go on kind of the more prevention side of things, um, is y'all, and I can't stress this enough, conditioning now is the most crucial thing that you can do for yourself. Whether it be stretch fractures at the hip, whether it be stretch fractures in the lower part of the legs, um, whatever it might be, training your body now to hopefully adapt to that um, type of exercise once you get to base is the most crucial thing that you can do. Um, so talking to Captain Krieger about what you can do um, in order to help yourself is probably the best thing you can do for your body. These type of, of injuries that we're talking about are what we term overuse injuries or chronic injuries. And it's because you didn't do enough before, you get to base, and you're overriding yourself, and then your body can't adapt fast enough to the demands that you're placing on it. So trying to do what you can now to prevent that is the most crucial thing that you can do. Um, some other things that you can talk about are shoulder mobility. I want to touch on some shin splints real quick. Yep. Another point on shin splints real quick. Um, do you have another, is there another question? Yeah, if you're, when you're rolling it, yes. when you're rolling your muscles, are you trying to go in between the muscle and the bone or on the outside of the muscle further away from uh, the bone? Where are, you, where are you trying to target the best? Uh, it'd be best when you're directly doing, go on the muscle, yeah? Directly yeah, on the muscle. As much on the muscle as you can get. Whatever's yeah. bothering you, that's the spot you yeah. use. So, if here. it's on the bone, obviously, you don't want to roll right on the bone um, because okay. you're going to have a whole lot of pain. So, yeah. flexing yeah, yeah. her foot up, this is your tibialis interior right there, okay? But what it does is it wraps around, okay? So, this is actually your muscle, all right? And then the connectivity of your tibia starts right here, going down. So, you want to start at the origin or the start of the muscle and then work your way down the entirety of the shin because that's going to get the whole thing, if that helps. So, taking, so do you mind rolling out? Yep. Yeah, so taking it all the way up and all the way down the shin is the best way. And then, like Captain Krieger is showing you, kind of that rotating method is going to really help get the entirety of um, the origin and the insertion of the muscle. And that's, I, right now I have shin splints right here, but this is the motion that I need to do for it. So I'm not necessarily ro rolling it out here. I'm rolling it out here because that's where the connection is. Good. I think we covered that. So really focusing on the entirety of the muscle was re really, really important. Um, and the other thing, if we think about the entirety of the muscle, so if we think about from the back here all the way across to the shin, um, the other thing I would suggest, and another thing we see a lot in, um, especially in the athletic population and in the military population especially, um, is if we think about the calf muscles and the soleus muscles, if we think about the calf, your pro stretch is going to be very, very interesting. If you can, can you pass me a chair, please? Yes. Yeah. And really something very, very interesting that you can uh, use the chip, use in a seated position. If you're just sitting around in your barracks or uh, in your squad base, is really just stretching either the front of the calf or the... Uh, really the calf it, it itself in the in stretch position. And these pro-stretch, if I take my shoe off, can really help stretch our calf, okay? Um, and it can really work on our ankle mobility, and the ankle mobility can be a huge, huge benefit 
when we talk about working on preventing kind of shin splints and anything of that nature because um, when we start working on um, our calf, our gastroc, our soleus, anything like that. In what addition, are those? I don't think we know what those are. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so our, like, our gastroc here, this is our calf muscle, is our, our, our gastroc. And then our soleus is actually located just, lo just below our, uh, our calf muscle, our gastroc. Um, and that can, be, that can be really stretched really well if we're either in a uh, knee bent position with our, our pro stretch or even if we're in a knee, knee bent position up against the wall. You get that? Good? Okay. <laughs> if we're actually in a, a knee bent position up against the wall, that can really help stretch um, down towards our Achilles tendon, right down towards our heel. And I'm getting a really, really good stretch with my knee bent here. Um, and that can really help prevent a lot of shin splint symptoms, quote unquote, that a lot of people get. Um, because it loosens up the back of our leg, which allows our anterior tibialis or tibialis anterior to be able to work the way that it's supposed to. So using the pro stretch, using our wall stretch with our knee bent and our knee straight can really help um, stretch out our shin, our calf. Um, and remember that the back of the leg and the front of the leg work in conjunction with each other. It's not in isolation. So if we can work both together and really keep um, good mobility in both, in, especially through the ankle and through the knee, both, um, through both joints, it can really help us out a lot. How long should we hold that stretch for? I would hold the stretch for, um, I, typically I tell um, individuals that I work with to hold it for 30 seconds to 45 seconds three sets to five sets. So I would say either three sets of 30 seconds to five sets of 30 seconds um, at a time, whenever you have uh, time for in your barracks. So if, if shin splints are your issue or your main issue, I would say use five sets of 30 seconds in your barracks to work on it. That's a minute and a half to two minutes if. Yeah, you can do that. And that's really, really, really quick, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that you can do very quickly, especially when you come right in All these things are going to get used up pretty quickly, um, and you don't want to have to be the one that creates like a sign up roster to use the foam roller for five minutes. You know, just bring an extra one. They have some collapsible foam rollers now that you can easily fit inside of a duffel bag, but again, like it's not a necessity, it's not a requirement. You're going to get access to it, uh, you're going to have access to all these things, including the Therakine. But you can also get creative, you know, tennis balls work just as well. Um, the strap, you don't need the specific stretching strap. You can use your web belt um, as well, so you'll have access to that too. And Brandon's a baseball athletic trainer, so um, we have baseballs lying all around the house. So um, for those sports um, athletes out there, if you have anything laying around your house now, um, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy anything special. You really can just bring whatever you have at home with you um, as long as it's okay. Um, and you can use that. So you can make, you can be creative with this. Yeah, if you have any questions about what you can bring, obviously you ask Captain Krieger prior to arriving um, when, when you get there. But yeah. um, these are all things that you can be kind of creative with and stuff like that. So. You want to go into sh shoulder mobility? Yeah, sure. We'll go, we'll go into shoulder mobility. So as Danielle said, I, I am a baseball athletic trainer by trade. Um, shoulders kind of my thing, I guess, <laughs> if you if you would say. So obviously the, the cross ball is kind of is kind of my baby. Um, really any kind of if anybody has any shoulder mobility issues, a lot of times it originates with the trap and the rhomboids. Um, so one thing I would I would say, especially uh, one of the biggest issues I would say 
is the back of the shoulder is a big issue. So any, anytime you're stretching, if you can focus on the back of the shoulder, then you kind of pull this way, pull this way. Yeah, that's a tricep stretch. I understand that, but trust me, it's going to get the back of the shoulder. But anytime you can get the back of the shoulder, put a lacrosse ball on the back of the, on the back wall and really roll out the trap. Gary, can you kind of get that the back there? Um, yep. Really, really roll out the trap, and you can kind of it's it's more of a seek and destroy mission, honestly. Um, this is what I tell my baseball guys. Um, <laughs> is 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 you really find a spot and you kind of hold it there until they it really. I mean, I would say 10 to 15 seconds until it really doesn't bother you as much anymore. And then you find another spot, you kind of roll it to another spot until you really feel like you're getting kind of an adhesion. And then you find another one, you hold it there for 10 to 15 seconds. And what it does is it's very similar to foam rolling your IT band, is it really finds a spot. Now, the other thing you can do is you can find a spot. So for me, it's my rhomboids. My rhomboids are very, very tight. What is that? Uh, it's, it's your back, sorry. <laughs> it's your back muscles, um, right, and it really control the, mu the movement of your shoulder blade. So right in this general area here, and yes, I have a sweatshirt on, I apologize. <laughs> but really, if I find that spot where I have a, a decent rhomboid adhesion, I can actually move through that area all the way up into shoulder flexion, where I feel like I normally have kind of a shoulder uh, mobility issue and I can kind of move it back and down and usually I'll do it two or three times and I'll put a lot of pressure into it and really all I'm doing is adding body weight to that area and again coming, I, I'm coming up on my toes to find a different area here kind of a seek and destroy adding a different area and coming down, and I'm going to be really honest, this feels absolutely terrible. <laughs> it's absolutely awful. And I can feel it coming coming through my neck. But honestly, that feels very, it feels a lot better when I go to move my arm up and down. Um, I'm somebody, personally, I have a labral tear, um, which is the connective tissue throughout my shoulder. And so I get a lot of adhesions through my shoulder. Um, especially through my back, the muscles that attach into my shoulder and hold it together. So it allows me to really move my shoulder the way it's supposed to move. So when I'm going to do things that I, I would need to do um, throughout officer uh, candidate training, um, I'm going to be able to get that full range of motion. Now, okay? would you say that having a full range of motion would help you with pull-ups? Absolutely. So Absolutely. Um, and actually this morning... Um, we actually went, Officer Gregory and I went and lifted up her body and I was able to do full pull-ups. Um, and it takes me some warming up and some stretching to be able to do full pull-ups. But to be able to get to this position and to be able to get down to, to where my lats down in this area actually activate, I have to be able to get my arms in a position um, and my shoulders in position to be able to do a full pull-up. Um, so doing uh, activities like this, Using the cane is very, very, very helpful. Very helpful. And God, I wish I had one. I may join the military just to get this device <laughs> right here, quite honestly. But um, to be able to use this and to get into my lats and, oh, it feels so good. <laughs> not really, but it's yes, really it does. Painful, actually. It's, it's really painful, actually. It's really painful, but it feels so good at the same time. And to be able to get in there and really be able to find a spot and, again, seek and destroy and pull however often I want to or however, however hard I want to and to be able to get in that, that exact location um, throughout my right shoulder especially where I know that my, my tear is, um, is very, very helpful. Captain Krieger? Oh, I was just going to say, so uh, for a little bit of lower back, these two knobs, you just put it in your back right here um, and you can adjust it to do your lower back as well. Um, so you might have some lower back issues, lower back pain when you start wearing your packs a little bit longer, um, when you get to the fleet wearing your flak and Kevlar. Um, so I purchased one of these. I brought this with me to the field for my Marines to use as well. Um, so this is just a really good tool to have um, on hand. It's called a Theracane. The Theracane is all, they, and they get this? They the have training. access to this? At access to training? Okay. So you have access to this at training. 
and even in the traps, especially when you first start wearing your packs, I assume that, you know, especially in the traps, yep. it's a very difficult uh, deal to be able to adjust to. So as you start wearing your packs, it's, it's a very good thing to start, you know, it's almost like a deep tissue massage that you can give to yourself, um, you know, every night to try to, you know, really dig in there and really find that trigger point, really find that area of adhesion that can help loosen up to be able to get the foam mobility. And foam mobility um, in the shoulders is second to none, in my opinion, to be able to really, really be able to be um, your best self when it comes to being able to use your hands, your arms, and your shoulders in the full range of motion. So to add to that, um, in order to hopefully prevent from you having to use these, the best thing that you can do in those events where you're either doing a lot of exercise with your shoulders or you're, you're wearing a pack um, is to try to keep the best posture that you can. Not, over, not only will that help you biomechanically, so that will help you actually complete um, the range of motion that you need to complete for your exercise, but also if you're wearing sacks and you start out like this and then eventually start rolling your shoulders because of you're tired or the, the load that's just so heavy um, and it's starting to wear on you, the best thing you can do for your body is just to always try to maintain the best posture that you can, which is shoulders back, chest out. Um, in order to help prevent those trigger points that Brandon was talking about, but also that can lead to some pretty serious um, neurological issues. So you can get impingement within your shoulders um, that can lead to some really weird sensations down into your hands. Um, so you wanna try to prevent that as best you can and the best way to do that is with best posture. So try to keep that in the back of your head as much as you can because that's really gonna help you the most. Yep. Um, so really the next thing that we had to talk about is uh, plantar fasciitis. Um, so we'll go into that and then we'll open it up for any questions, any additional questions that you guys might have. So plantar fasciitis, what that is, is um, so at the bottom of your foot, kind of the sole of your foot, whether you have no arch or um, a high arch, <laughs> uh, uh, so no arch is what people term as flat feet. Um, that is absolutely no arch. High arch is when you have like a really big he divot. Has, he has high arch because I, I, I have flattish. You have flattish feet. You have a little bit of an arch. A little. A little bit. I have actually pretty high arches. Unfortunately, I'm not going to take my shoes off. I'll, I'll take my socks off <laughs> yeah. so people can kind of okay. see the difference yeah. between so, myself so, and so, technically. Yeah, so this is a really good way to see it. So turn to the side. There you go. So Brandon actually has a pretty high arch. Captain Grieger has a little bit of arch. Actually, you have a pretty normal arch. Oh, good for um, me. Go, <laughs> the one thing in my life that's lean. What? Roll your foot Wait, in. Like there we go. So yeah, if go. if Captain Grieger were to roll her foot in, it would almost that's create right. almost no arch. So that can lead to um, something called plantar fasciitis, which is the um, fascia of the bottom of your foot that ultimately creates these arches. It can get inflamed. Now again. The fascia actually starts at your toes and goes all the way back to the back of your heel here, okay? So much like the IT brand that we were talking about earlier, um, you can get um, inflammation um, within that arch, so within that fascia, and that can create some pretty bad pain, all right? The best way to do that, just like we've talked about everything else, stretching, rolling out, you're gonna hear us say it 5,000 more times, Stretching and rolling out is the best way to prevent that. Also, wearing proper shoes is the best way to do that, which Captain Krieger can talk more about that, um, about how you can do that at, at OCS or basic training. Um, but um, stretching, rolling out, using the foam roller are, is the, really the best way to do that. <laughs> so if anybody's catching on yet, um, stretching is really really important Imagine that. i don't know if anybody caught that yet but <laughs> stretching is good um flexibility throughout is is fantastic um and i don't mean like double jointed flexibility um and no way are we telling you that you should be able to like put your foot behind your head okay what we're telling you is you should have normal flexibility especially um throughout your calves your hamstrings um, throughout your shoulders, be able to get your arm all the way over your head without a problem, be able to get your arm all the way to the opposite shoulder blade without a problem, okay? If we're talking about plantar fasciitis, one of the main things, and I have pretty significant plantar fasciitis, Captain Craig, I don't know about yourself, um, the one thing I like to use is either a tennis ball, one thing you'll get in Officer Canada School is a lacrosse ball, you'll have access to that, 
um, is to be able to roll this out. And now, so I can do it either standing up, which I like to just kind of lift my toes up and push. Um, and I can feel it, it's not a very comfortable feeling. It, I can actually feel like kind of a crunching sensation. Um, I actually also feel um, kind of a, a crunching sensation, crunching sensation um, when I lift my foot up and I just simply roll through, especially for myself, um, through my heel. And I can really feel that towards um, the back portion of my plantar fascia. Um, the other thing you can do is you can utilize the strap that you'll get, uh, you'll have access to through Officer, Officer Canada School and put it around your toe. Or your web belt. Or your web belt. And which will allow you to kind of pull your toes up and utilize that lacrosse ball to really, really roll out that area and feel kind of a crunching sensation. And that just means you're breaking up all the, de the adhesions through your plantar fascia to be able to work that out on the inside. Um, if you're having pain towards the inside of your foot, typically, and not always, so please don't quote me on this, don't say that Brandon from Troy said that, <laughs> that if I have pain on the inside of my foot, it means X, Y, Z, okay? Um, typically, it means it's more soft tissue. Um, now, if you're having shooting pain through your foot, obviously, please see a medical professional. Please go to medical. Yep. Correct. Uh, yeah. Patrick see your corpsman. See your corpsman um, and, and really kind of make sure that the issues are what we're talking about, um, especially if that issue is on the outside of your foot. The outside of your foot typically t uh, is indicative of more issues uh, through the bone and, and kind of stress fractions and stuff. But if you're having pain, obviously, please see your, anytime you're having pain, please see your corpsman yeah. to make sure that, that we're doing the right thing. Um, we're just trying to give you issue, uh, ways to deal with soft tissue injuries. The other thing you can do is use the spiky ball. Um, they can really kind of um, work on some soft tissue issues. And I love the spiky ball for, for plantar fascia issues, particularly when rolling out the bottom of my foot um, and, and, the, and the inside of my foot, um, which can uh, lead to some issues um, and, and really lead to some um, relief in, in um, the foot area, particularly when we use the strap, we use the web belt um, to pull the toes up, to really tighten that area, and really deal with the inside of the foot. And actually, that feels absolutely terrible. <laughs> I'm really, 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 really honest with both of you, that, that feels awful. Sounds like you need um, to stretch more. It feels, oh, yeah. it sounds like I need to stretch more. <laughs> walk, walk, walk. Which is certainly, certainly the case. Um, the pro stretch, which we talked about earlier, Okay, for the shin splints, can obviously help with um, the plantar fascia issues. Anytime we talk about plantar fascia issues, we're also talking about issues throughout the calf, which we talked about the stretches earlier against the wall. Um, we're talking about the anterior tibialis, which we talked about stretching um, the front of the, uh, the shin a little bit against the foam roller. So um, really remember that everything as we're going through this is all interconnected. Um, it can can be uh, really, really, really um, fixed through fixing one issue towards the other or worsened through not fixing one issue or the other. So um, just quickly, a few things that um, I know that might become an issue um, is low back pain. Uh, low back pain a lot of the time can manifest just because you have tight hamstrings. Um, your hamstrings actually connect in your low back. So um, doing basic hamstring stretches can really help that. Um, as well as using a cane, um, like uh, Captain Krieger was showing you, um, using these two uh, little spiky ends um, to kind of help massage that lower back area, can help um, break, up, break up those adhesions and kind of help relax the muscle in order to have greater flexibility. Um, also, any kind of um, ankle injuries that you might have, whether it be your roller or ankle, um, out with PT or whatever it might be. Um, excuse the dogs. <laughs> um, a lot of the time, those can be treated very quickly um, with some basic um, ice and compression. But in the event that you have swelling, bruising, anything like that, please be sure you go see your corpsman to help prevent any kind of further issues you might have later on that might help um, increase your mobility uh, so that you will have greater access to um, range of motion and being able to be as functional as you can um, with your exercises.
Um, so if you watched my trail video uh, a couple uh, a few weekends ago, I was talking about trail shoes. You can bring two pairs of running shoes at Officer Candidate School. One can be a pair of trail shoes. One can be a pair of like regular PFT shoes. Um, and then also through all this, another preventative measure that you can do is buying your combat boots now. Um, talk to your OSO and make sure that you get the right pair. They have to be the ones with the Eagle Globe anchor on the side of them. Um, but start breaking those in so that way you get used to the weight of the boots. Um, and it's also going to be restrictive on your ankles as well as causing your uh, feet and calves to work a little bit more. So by doing this motion right here, you can see that that front part of my calf is now flexing a lot more and I'm putting a lot more work on it and that's exactly what's going to happen when you start wearing combat boots for the first time. So this muscle is going to be extra tight even if you're running 12-15 miles a week um, and you're used to running that kind of impact, uh, you could still develop sh uh, stress fractures or shin splints when you're starting to work in your combat boots because again your feet are just not used to doing this with all the extra weight of the combat boots. So. Talk to your OSO, start working that into your regimen of uh, physical training prior to attending officer candidate school, and that'll also help you uh, with some preventative measures. So, unless you guys have anything else, I figure we'll just open up for questions yeah. and yeah, for see, sure. see if anybody has anything. Uh, one question I saw earlier was about uh, adhesion. You kept bringing up the word adhesion, but mm -hmm. uh, some people were a little confused by what you meant by that, so if you could just... Yeah, more layman's terms it for us. So an adhesion is just basically a tightness within the muscle tissue itself. Um, a lot of the time, people term so trigger points, um, adhesions. They can kind of be cross utilized. Um, it's the same thing. So it's scar tissue buildup or um, muscle tightness that creates a area, specific area that does not allow the muscle to go through its full range of motion. So it can't do its full function. Um, you you put your finger right where it is and you point really hard or you push really hard and there's a lot of pain that's ultimately uh what we term as an adhesion or as a trigger point think about it an adhesion as a knot right that's the best way to put it um especially when you're talking about a lot of times we get in the back and the shoulder i have a knot in my back i have a knot in my shoulder i have a knot in my neck that's what we mean by an adhesion so any kind of knot quote unquote within the muscle and you will get those in your calves and your shins and your anterior to the alice and, and all the muscles we the hamstrings and all the muscles we talked about tonight um you will get that as well um throughout so um, that's what we mean by adhesion so think when we say adhesion we mean more of a, a, a knot so for the visual learners out there we heard a really good analogy um think about a, a box full of toothpicks. When you open it up, it looks all nice and aligned. All the toothpicks are in one direction. Now you dump that out on the table. They're all jumbled up in a mess. So by foam rolling, doing deep tissue work with the Theracane, stretching, that's essentially pushing it all back into one straight line so they're all parallel again. And then that's going to make it the adhesion go away. And again, all of these items are things that will be provided However, if you want to bring your own, you can. If you're going to do so, you should probably label it. Uh, but again, if you're trying to get ready beforehand, these are all things you can get yourself. Maybe talk to your OSO, uh, and they might be able to provide them, or at least point you in the right direction to get that. Is that yep. correct, Lieutenant yep, Absolutely, and I bought all these on Amazon. So uh, we can post the links to Amazon for these specific brands and what they recommend and what they use at Troy University. Again, if anybody has questions, just type it. I'll get to them as best as I can. Uh, one of the other questions was, uh, what is the age requirement? I know it's a little off topic, but what is the age requirement for prior service? Uh, um, prior service, so I think you might be asking about, um, do we subtract any time away from your time in service to your current age? We don't do that um, in the Marine Corps, so prior service or not, doesn't matter. Our uh, age cap that we can work with in without doing a waiver is uh, 27 to 28 years old depending on your uh, contract and we can go up to 34 years old uh, but again you need to be in exceptional physical fitness uh, capabilities you need to have stellar letters of recommendation uh, essentially it's it is going to be a waiver process that your OSO will be the one to determine if you qualify for or not all right well all right well 
Uh, Danielle, Brandon, thank you guys very much for taking the time yes. on your Thanksgiving Welcome. weekends. Um, they're my family, so they didn't really have a choice. <laughs> um, but anyways, so thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I'll go over blister care and a few other preventative stuff uh, on a future weekend. Um, but all this stuff is essentially things to keep you in the fight. And ultimately, um, send me a message on Instagram. You can send me an email. My Instagram account is SFL underscore marine officer um but you should be also talking to your own officer selection officer so thank you guys i uh, appreciate it um and if you have any questions i'll be here to answer them